guys, Screw Blind Wave, I'm Eric. I'm Calvin. Aaron, and we're back with my favorite thing of the week. Ander! Last time on Ander, mm. the owl of I, Donnie, comes. Owl? I. The eye. Ooh, I don't know why I said owls it. have eyes. They're quite large. Ooh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they can look anywhere. Fucking owls just exploding in the sky. Like, well, that's pretty. That'd be some shit. Uh, yeah, that's the like Aldani heist. people, uh, some will show up, but not many. Probably but, like a hundred. Yeah. Yeah, and we're working on a heist. And they stink. They steal a bunch like of that, stuff. Right? That's what that one what? guy from S.H.I.E.L.D. says. Hunter, yeah, he said it. He said yeah. they start stinky down there in the, in the valley. In the valley? I think that's what he said. I think I'm an exact quote. The valley stinky. Uh, yeah, Those they're showing mom, up, mom. as is the rebels. And Luthen. And Luthen's, Luthen? Luthen's crew. Yeah, Luther just around. by the like he's the radio, just, just like waiting. Like, yeah, oh, fuck. Worried that he's got his, his go him. bag. I do anything. He's got his go bag ready. Yeah, and he is he's ready to cut out of there. Yep. He's worried about any kind of connection that he might is. be made. To and Mon Mothma's family is not happy. Dicks. Well, hey, the daughter just. I just said not happy. Set. I didn't call them names like Calvin did. Well, the daughter is a kid and she doesn't know except for what she sees. Well, speaking she's of calling, doing a benefit to help people, it's charitable. Mm. And her but, daughter's like, you only do things for yourself. That's well, yeah. contradictory. Well, yeah, but she doesn't do things for her. Like, what if she's doing things for all the other kids? But what about her? I think that a senator's child is very well off. And she shouldn't be so complainy. Well, you're not a senator's child, so maybe you, you don't you know what it's like. Did you She's complaining. Yeah, she is. <laughs> she's hey, also a princess. To be, fair, to be fair, I don't hate her. Yeah. She's just wrong. Gotcha. A little entitled. Well, you know what? Spe- you can't compare pain, Calvin. Okay. You can't compare pain. Speaking I can. of Shep. calling, speaking of calling people names, they have a scale names, for that. Shep. We're moving on. Speaking of calling people's names, <laughs> uh, all the rebels have names, right? Uh huh. And we had a poll last time. If you have to save one of the Aldani rebel crew, who do you save? Oh, the heist crew. Yep, the heist crew. Three percent said Tamarin. Three. Wow. Tamarin's cool. Only three, dang. Ten uh, percent said scheme. Eleven percent said Vel. Sixteen uh, percent said Senta, and fifty-eight percent Nemec. Yep. Whose what, first name is Karis, by what the way. Percent did Senta have? Senta had what? a sixteen. Sixteen percent. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ah, stab him! <laughs> no, we had some replies too. Let's see what people were saying. Uh, Doctor Bobcat says, "Save the sweet little boy." AC5555, or worth comp 5, says the waif. So Vel. Mm. Uh, Logan says Nemec must live to see what the rebellion achieves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> A lot of people die. Josh Borman says Nemec, which is why he will die. Brendan Dodge says Karis for sure. Karis. Which hmm. is Nemec's first name. Ryan says none of them. They all seem like asshats. 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 Really? Yeah. Ryan's full on the Empire, it seems like. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, they all are, uh, they're not nice. Very, very suspicious They're aggressive, people. they're suspicious. Everyone has their own rebellion, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, Spencer, I can't really justify, says, none. They are all traitors and rebel scum. <laughs> that one may be very much more imperial. I don't know if I can twist Spencer's. <laughs> I mean, Andor's kind of an asshat too, right? Like, he just... I'm being paid. Right? Yeah, and he's killing people and shit, you know? Like, but they're against the Empire, which is more ass hatty. Mm. True. Right? A now lot we, can, of them. We, can, we can't compare pain, but we can compare ass hatchery. We can. And the amount of pain that would be caused by shoving your head up your ass that far. Yes. We'll end with the High Priestess, Darth Sue, who says Save all the Drays. He's right. The sheep must be saved. Their milk must be harvested and drank. What? Why? It's for my tea. No one's trying to kill them. <laughs> I got some more sludge. There's that filth over here. Is he just stabbing himself? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Look at <laughs> Don't worry. You'll be fine. He'll sleep when it's done. <sighs> He'll rest when it's done. The eye, Colonel. You're in for a treat. It really is something to see. 
Quite the celestial spectacle. I'm looking forward to it. I like his black cuffs and collar. Yeah. Commandant. Is that where it is, Commandant? I believe so. And then the colonel is mm -hmm. visiting. Are we secure? I've brought in 30 sentries from Alkenzi. I'll have them close at hand to supervise. I've sent our best men to the perimeters for insurance. Tonight must be perfect. That's the plan, sir. Perfect. I want that word ringing in your ears. Perfect. Valley one, valley one. Valley one, go. Valley one. Valley one, valley one on the spot. Valley one, valley one. Look at this little place they got. Lock and confirm, Echo. Lock and confirm. What are they doing? Confirm. We're locked in. Mm -hmm. With all them. So they're in the valley. Though. Moving on. Mm -hmm. Safe travels. <clears throat> where are they all dying are going to be? I think. I think. I don't know. I mean, I would assume that's why they call it the va uh, Valley One. And they said that they had a sacred valley. They didn't tell you, did they? He was a stormtrooper. Really? Oh, he was? Yeah. That's how Should he knows. Been here with Marching. Out. Uh, mm. that's the first one. Dude, it's loud too. Yeah, it is. There's gonna be a bunch that's of. That's gonna cover uh, a lot of noise, right? Uh -huh. And then they're they're gonna be escaping right through it. Plan. I wonder if that guy's like shifted. Mm -hmm. He seems to have purpose with this. Oh boy. Stick. You gotta go, you gotta go. You got the marching down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah, Astro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So stretchy belts now. <laughs> Robota. I'm dressing Leonard. He's 12, he can dress himself. Come and look at this sash. Come here, help me get dressed. None of this was stolen properly, it's all compressed. Perhaps you've expanded? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good. Good marching. We got a push pen for John. Bridoli, Vitaklur. Snowfrank. Quali Man. Hmm. Those are interesting Get ready. outfits. Yeah. I think I hear two coming. <clears throat> are they divers? Maybe. Going into the water, are they gonna blow up the dam? Maybe. Is that what those like was that a bomb? Is that what that was? Backpack thing? Let's go. It was like a not the backpack, but like that thing. Yeah. What's that? Oh, it's probably an underwater like, like a diver thing. Like the things you... that you hold on to yeah, and it, like they hold it and you Squad! Halt! Oh, Whoa. fuck. It's like the rock. Breathe. That is such a cool shot. <laughs> that is an amazing <laughs> shot. Wrong time to mess up. They were supposed to call us! What are you gonna learn? We were waiting! You were waiting? That's your excuse? You should hmm. know better. Fucking hunter. We don't fully know the plan, so it'll probably work, right? I don't know. What, what are they going to do? I don't know. They're so tense. I imagine they're going to flood, right? It means killing all these people. Take this goat fur. Thank you for the goat fur. Dre! Dude, are Hell? we golden eyeing us? Solid. Are we going or not? Val. Go. We go. Copy. Alright, now what? I love this shoe. Yeah, just so a good. Yeah. shift. Yeah. Our ghosts have strong and long memories. He says, 
May the eye find the good in all of us. <laughs> That's what I said, bitch! <laughs> Holy shit! I don't want. I don't want to go down face first. Well, you don't want to go down. I want to go back and then ass first. This. Yeah. I don't know. Please. Throw it on the fire. Yeah. yeah. Their damn trade of peace. Are they gonna start an attack? This guy's awesome. I want to go camping as a Donnie. I think it'd be fun. The days of passing skins and ritual nonsense will be soon behind us. No great loss there. It's not as if there's much our Donnie civilization to even forget about in the first place. Drop it. Time to get fucked. On the floor. What's all this? <laughs> Move. This is an outbreak. Why? Stop talking. Stop right there. Didn't disarm him. Let the boy go. <laughs> Colonel, please. Nobody has to die. <laughs> oh! Oh, man. I wasn't sure who shot first. You can join your men at the bottom of the hill now. Enjoy the eye. Yeah, go have fun. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You'll never get out of here. <laughs> Bam, that was such bitch. an imperial thing to do. That's good. <laughs> As a stormtrooper, you probably just wanted to hit everybody. Ah, cool. Magic. We know about the vault and how it works. We need your hand to key the sensor. We can take just that if you'd prefer. You don't ever make it out. You better pray we do. You have no idea. One path, one choice. We win or everyone dies. <laughs> oh, fuck. Starts now. Ugh. Please just do what they say. Man. What is that? It's a gotta be bomb? It's gotta be the damn controls. Yeah, but what does it control? Yeah, the floodgates. It's a damn control! What are these damn controls for? <laughs> yeah, it's overriding oh, everything. Fuck. The scanner. It's whole, the whole communication there on the dam isn't working. Down! Against the wall. Move. Move. Down. We're just Imperial caterers. Yeah, right? <laughs> We're, just, We're the cooks. We have Imperial aprons. If you slow us down, if you stall, if you argue, if you play us in any way, they will die. You kill us anyway. Because that's what you do, right? No. If we get what we came for, everyone walks away. But if we go down, you're right there with us. 14 minutes. Move. Gotta hurry, gotta hurry. Mm-hmm. Go. Let's tell us what this Tense as fuck. It's just her here? This is the skeleton crew, right? Yep. And no one's gonna come, they're all checking out the, the celestial event. They won't get caught playing games. Coming down on the floor! <laughs> Come on down, inspection! Let's up! Let's go! Oh shit, oh shit, we, were, we weren't doing anything, sir! It's gonna take a long time to move all that shit. You are gonna load us down as fast as possible! Anyone doesn't want to hustle for the next 10 minutes, raise your hand. Alright, up! 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 They're gonna use them to load it? Yep. Yeah, that's so smart. Oh, uh, we're. Yeah, I do indeed. And Gorn could like put people there just for labor. Yeah. <laughs> I like going back to this too. It's like their own song of resistance. <laughs> They're in. Go. I'm almost done. I'll be right behind you. Uh, somebody gonna overpower the kid. Mmm. Yeah, take one, all of it. Echo one on spot. Echo one. Oh, echo one, careful. One spot. Valley one, loud and clear. Taking the boat. Damn it. He's too good at his job. Kimsey. Come on, get it turned around. 
It makes sense to have all these other guys here so that you can use them to look. <laughs> <laughs> Right? <laughs> he picks up one of those things and it. <laughs> yeah, you turn off all the lights so you can see. Shit. Oh, okay. The eye of Is that why you said you turn off all the lights so you can see? Yeah. Like, we talk about it. No, like, yeah, so you can see them better. Look at that, it's amazing. I wanna go. No, Eric, no. We got some trade milk and watch, man. It'll be great. Here come some people. They're, they're gonna be trouble. Fucking, what's his name? Kinsey? Uh huh. That guy's gonna be problems, too. Oh, yeah. Get out of here! <laughs> Making the con up, push the guards. How, much, how long would it take to kill? I don't know. They're also trying to get as much as they can. They probably won't get it all. Yeah. There's a lot in here, you know? Yeah. I mean, Luthen said entire. Sure. All the shots were so well planned out. Oh, great. I gotta build all this shit. <laughs> Whoa. Right? Whoa. Oh, fuck! That's so fucking cool. They said it's like uh, microscopic crystals, like in clusters or something like that, right? Wow. Oh, my gosh. Wow, man. Of course you wanna see this. Almost home. Everyone can go home. Let's move. There's so much still in there. Go still loading. We have two minutes. Ugh. <sighs> I was afraid you'd be leaving. We need to be locking up. This is when he snaps. Yeah, he knows this is him. That's right, bitch. You took my girl. You'll hang for this. Seven years serving you. I deserve worse than that. Are we good to go? Oh, fuck. We're good. Um, hey, what come a on, line. Come on. Yeah. I deserve worse than that. Oh shit! Oh, here comes the time. Yeah, this is so come. cool. They're loading up. Man, we saw some. Dude, look at that. That's such a cool oh, shot. Oh my gosh. Eyes don't have. Oh, oh God! What's happening? Just leave it. Get this thing in the air. Yeah, you gotta go. What's going on here? The ties are coming. We've set up two episodes. Oh, how scary they are! Shit! Don't hesitate. Tell him he needs to leave. Sir, Kim I am giving you a direct a... order, Corporal. What is going on here? He's having a heart attack. Oh, he's faking. Yeah, you, you gotta go. Oh shit. You gotta go. No! Fuck, no! Damn, Gorn. He didn't even have a gun. Why'd you shoot him? No! Oh, that guy. No! Oh, that no. oh, oh shit. Seeing this cockpit from all these views, it's so cool. I know, right? <laughs> I love the green, the reflection of the event happening. Oh my god. Dude, gosh. that's a. Kid, you gotta not miss at all. You got an E11, those aren't good for precision. <laughs> That guy had it. No! You didn't cover him! He shot a guy, but yeah, I get you. Ooh, okay. Good huh. shit, kid. You gotta go! You gotta go. Look at the sky! I know, this guy's great. Alright, you gotta fly this fucking box. <laughs> it's on a rail, right? Uh huh. Uh, there we go. That custom Whoa, weapon. That's that cool. so fucking cool. Oh, oh yeah. my god! Oh, no! no! Fuck! Ah! Why didn't that one fucked up wheel not work? Look at the sky! I can't feel my legs. I can't. I no! Can't feel my legs. What is that? Med spike. Keep him still? <laughs> There's a bunch of back down there or something? Hold on! Dude, he needs the path! This shit explodes! Oh, fuck! Dude, that, that is sky so, looks so beautiful! Great. Yeah, they can't see what there's. Oh, well, yeah, it's like chaff, oh, right? Oh, wow! This shot is fucking incredible. This is the one from the trailer. 
I remember that. Yeah. And now you want me to climb? Climb! Just trust him, man! He's in so much pain. They have all this mapped out, but the ties don't. Well, I guess we go up. Oh, this looks so cool. I see the hole. Yeah. As long as the ties don't make it through. Last one. Oh, oh there we go. What about her? I think she just leaves. Just goes she just out. walks out. She just goes out with the Adon with the Donnie. How do we get to the doctor? I wonder who the doctor is. Do we know the doctor? Mm hmm. Well, where are we now? Ugh! That is a hell of a needle. That's ridiculous! He's, He's got, great! He's got four arms. Yeah. This is the doctor we saw from the trailer. This yeah. shot right oh, here. This is so great. It's just another person behind him. I know. <laughs> What'd you tell me? You want to win? And walk away. Well, forty million apiece. Oh, come on, man! Don't tell me you haven't thought about it. <sighs> See, I can't fly the trawler, but I do have a safe place we can hold up. You think he's, he's testing him? He's yeah. Do you think he's serious or testing? Because he doesn't, he didn't trust him before. There's a moon eight parsecs from here with nobody home. Put that thing down. Catch our breath. Split up the winnings. Oh! Damn, Cassian. Damn. I was not expecting him to do that. Uh, nor was I. Wow. That was a quick draw, too. It was. He did not hesitate. Thank you for trying. Jesus. That was a test. Did he pass? Oh, God damn it! Man, he's dead too. Got anything from Aldani? Excuse me? Aldani. Big rebel attack last night. That's all we need. Well, I'll have to look. Maybe we have something in the back. Really? I was kidding. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the relief you would feel. Oh, Dang it. Susanna White. Great job. <laughs> yeah. That could have been a season finale, and I wouldn't have been disappointed. It was really good. Man, and, I, and, we're, it all. and we're halfway through with this season, right? Six? Yeah. I think there's 12. Six, 12. Oh man. Hmm. We lost like everybody. We did. That's early rebellion is gonna be like that. I mean that's exactly what uh Luthen said, like they're all disposable. Right? I mean, that's the beauty of someone like Cassian Andor, he's disposable and it yeah. kind of you know I don't like the first he, the first thing wasn't like did everybody make it? It was like there was a rebel attack, it worked. And he's like, yay! He doesn't care. Sure. I thought it was more of like, he thought someone was connecting him to it. And then when he realized why he was asking about Adani, then he was like, okay, it's not that it's been connected to me. It's that sure. things pulled through and it worked. Oh, I, yeah, I, I mean, he did say like, you know, if this thing works, we can actually start this thing for real. Like, that's a lot of money. It's going to buy a lot of fucking... They could buy X-Wings. They could buy ships. You know? Sure. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. I just, like, I, he doesn't know yet who or who didn't make it or anything mm -hmm. yet. So I thought it was, like, it's like a sigh of relief in a way. Like, he's he's laughing because he's relieved with, one, they pulled it off. Two, it's not actually being connected to him, or so it seems, you know? Because it could have went real bad and maybe connected either Andor or Vel. You know, either one. And both of those survived, so. Do you think that Luthen had an idea that there were people in that group that he, you couldn't trust, which is why he put an outsider in there that couldn't, someone like Cassian that he knows will shoot on sight? <laughs> and he put someone in there just in case, like just for someone like Skeen that was going to fuck everyone over? 
I don't know. Because he didn't. It's not like he put Cassian in there because they needed a a pilot for the Brock box freighter. Really, you know. I figure he would have said something that was the case. I just wonder if he would. Well, like, who was the pilot otherwise? I don't know. I mean, they like, had. I'm not really sure. They they had all the jobs covered. They just didn't know the lever for the box freighter or whatever, like Cassian recommended. I'm not sure who. Sure. Would have been the, the well, pilot. like Skeen couldn't fly. I, didn't, I don't know. Val couldn't I don't fly. know if Val could or anything. And I I don't, I don't have a sense of anyone else being like the pilot. But they had know. to have had someone because they were so, they thought it was so strange they were adding someone last minute and they had everything else planned out. Sure. So uh, maybe it would have been uh, Gorn or uh, Tamarin, maybe? The Stormtrooper? Tamarin. I don't know. I mean, maybe. I don't know if Stormtroopers usually know how to fly, but there's nothing saying they can't. Mm-hmm. So I was saying, I don't know. I think bringing sure. them in is like, well, we're, we need a pilot and we don't have that, but they didn't specify that why they brought him in they just yeah i imagine that they didn't have a pilot and they wouldn't have questioned why there was a new guy sure but i don't have an answer for who the pilot was before that like everyone else seemed to kind of have roles to an extent but like were they just going to send three stormtroopers not four like him being there seemed like it filled out what they were Mm -hmm. missing you know sure like otherwise they would have just had three guys marching up there but all the squads seemed to have four in them so that, that seems odd too so i don't know Maybe Luthen saw, like, well, there is a hole and we need to fill this and he would be perfect for for all this. But they were like, no, we don't want him because, I don't know, they just, they had who they had. But I don't, I don't know why. Maybe we'll get more information why Luthen wanted to bring him in. Maybe we won't. Maybe on a rewatch, we'll understand I, I, it better. I love, I love a character like Skeen because, like, he got me. Like, I really believed him. You know? Yeah. But, I mean, it sets up like he was, you know, not to... Not to be an asshole, but like he had the prison tattoos, you know. He had sure. there were the, the signs are there sure. that he might not be. We complete. we prejudged him yeah. in a positive respect because he was a rebel. We were like, oh, he's using, you know, whatever life he has left to mm-hmm. to try and help other people to but, do something right. And I loved his. Well, oh, man, I loved his life. That's one of the things too. Yeah. Is like not, you know, not all rebels are good. Not all imperial are bad. Okay. You know, yeah. like there's that sure. line there where it's like, well, sure, he's a rebel, so he must be good. But it's like, well. No, he might just be out for himself. Yeah. And you see the Imperial side on, like, Obi-Wan, where we had, uh, whatever her name was, I forget, where she was an Empire. Kind of like Gorn, right? Mm-hmm. They, it, something happened, and they were like, I don't agree with that. I will do whatever I can to help yeah. a rebellion side of things, you know? Yeah. He saw the Aldani, I think, that he fell in love with or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. And then she was killed, and he saw all these terrible things with their people, and over those seven years, he grew to like these people who hate him yeah. because he's Imperial. Tala. Tala, that's much right, yeah. The Donnie, you know, the scene, like, what they're saying to the Imperials, like, mm-hmm. you can tell there's a distaste there for oh, what they're doing, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, yeah that hit. chieftain or whatever, he knows exactly what they're doing. Sure. So Gorn, May the eye be open on you long enough mm-hmm. to discern any good. <laughs> sure. So if there's, like, some, you know, if he did fall in love with an Aldani, he's also being hated by those people and then hating the people he's with because of what they've done to them you know yeah. and it's like a double outsider yeah so he has the best he had the best line of the night which was seven years serving you I deserve worse than that I'm worse than that. hanging yeah, yeah. Uh, I love that all, all the dialogue is great but like the atrocities he's committed kind of thing is that the idea yeah all the orders that he's followed the, the shame of being part of the imperial cog the imperial machine you know he, he, he the eye was open and long enough for him being with that Donnie woman. Sure. Yeah. No, I like seeing both sides of that. Because I feel like we have a lot of examples, whether it's, uh, I don't know, Sabine, Wedge, Finn, of people who are like on an Imperial, a First Order side of mm-hmm. things, and they want to defect and whatnot. But I don't think there's as many, like, these are rebellion people, and they aren't necessarily good people, you know? I mean, Cassian was the... Was really the one. Him, you know, I'd I say him and Saul Guerrero. Saul Guerrero, you know? of course. Yeah. He's very extreme, but he's also very against the Empire. Where Skeen here, I don't really care about the Empire or the Rebellion. I just care about myself, you know? Which is kind of Han Solo ish, but Han came back. Yeah. He didn't only care about himself. He helped save the princess. He came back to stop the Death Star. And it, makes, it makes perfect sense why he would reach out to Cassian like that for help, because Cassian had that, like, I'm here for the money. That's it. There's nothing else. But what he doesn't know is that Cassian has something inside of him, too. Which is just a hatred for the Empire that Skeen lied about. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Nemec saw it. I think he recognized it in their conversations. Like, the Empire doesn't even care about you. 
Yeah. You're so inconsequential to them. They're so big. They're like a global corporation. It's like, what is one person going to do against that, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, that's why he was, like, wanting to give the book to him. Like, let him read through all of his thoughts and yeah. whatnot. And I think he was the, probably the only one of the crew on on the planet that really, like, got what he was saying. Because, like, pretty much everybody else was like, oh, yeah, he, he writes in his little book all these little... But yeah, things against but, the empire. But Cassian would engage with him and challenge him, and a guy like that wants to be challenged. That's yeah. how you get better. So I, I hope that he he keeps that book, and it's just such a cool thing to have, like a primarily younger character too, like a younger character that can write that manifesto, and then Cassian just has it in his pocket, and one you know soon or whatever he's gonna get bored and pull it out and really start to think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Because I kind of figured most, if not all, of the team would die. And that's what happened. But, yeah. And, I, you know, my favorite thing about this show is that there are no real background characters. Like, everybody there, like, you know, the Commandant. He has a wife. He has a kid. He has, like, a little story. Like, sure. everybody's fleshed out. Like, there's yeah. no, like, Moff Gergerod. From, from, you know, Revenge of the Jedi. Or, no sorry, line. Uh, Return of the Jedi. Right? <laughs> well, he's just kind of like, we'll double efforts and we'll do some shit. Yeah, but I don't really have any personal motivation or anything. But everybody here, like even oh, yeah. even Kimsey, he's just like, he's a dick. Yeah, and he's, an, he's Imperial. But he he's like, hey, something's suspicious here. I'm going to go do my job. Did the Commandant die? Like, he had a heart attack, right? That's what was going on? I think he did. Like... I mean, they were talking about, like... I think it's, they, it's compacted. Maybe yeah. you've expanded. I was like, were they establishing, like, you've expanded, yeah. you're I, not at I your healthiest? I think they worked him to death. Yeah. Which is what I, he was going to do to it's the, an incredible, to the people, right? It's an maybe, incredible thing to do in ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Maybe a mixture of right? that and the betrayal of Gorn. Yeah. You know, maybe stress. there's two things there. Worried that about a like, sure. yeah, yeah, there's a lot of stress and things but going it's on. It's kind of poetic that he did, they did to him what he was going to do to the rest of the people. They were going to turn them into laborers to create that sure. spaceport. Sure. The last yeah. time that they would be allowed up there, mm-hmm. and every were, every year that they would come up there again is they yeah. would capture whoever came and force them to work. Under threat of death, they made them all mm-hmm. do their labor. Yeah, I wasn't. Sure. I thought they were gonna like blow the dam or something. I wasn't really sure what they were doing. I was. But, I would be but, very surprised if they did something like that because then they would kill all the dying. Well, I know. Right? That's why I'm like, I don't understand what they're no, doing. Right. But it was just their method of just getting to where the other guys were because mm-hmm. they couldn't march, I guess, with them. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. And I, I suppose they hacked or they had to keep that channel open to unlock the money. Uh, but then they they hacked the command to open it actually right mm-hmm. like when he had that little box he's like I'm trying yeah they needed the, and that's why the ties still came they right? needed the signal to still be connected otherwise the combination lock wouldn't yeah. work right yeah whatever they blew I don't think it would have opened it mm-hmm. I uh, you know Star Wars is it's one of my favorite things of all time but you know Aaron and I have been reading a lot of books and. Uh, in the Star Wars universe on Badonkagonk, which we're going to be having a Badonkagonk next week on Thursday, uh, reading another High Republic book. But I say that to say that Star Wars is primarily a visual medium. Like it needs to have spectacle. It needs to capture an imagination. And we're all jaded now because pretty much anything you can you can think of, ah, we can do it. But ILM, the Gilroys... They came up with some shit that I've never seen before. <laughs> I loved seeing the Eye of Aldani. It was... I don't, I don't I can't remember the last time I was just like, Jesus, <laughs> in a Star Wars thing like this. Hmm. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I'm trying to think. I, I feel like... Uh, Something new, I should say. Like uh, episode nine with using like the hyperspace the, jumping yeah. uh, thing. Light speed skipping. Yeah, the skipping. That's definitely new. Like, that was a newer thing and yeah. looked very interesting in the aspect sure. of, like, what they were doing and where yeah. we were going and stuff, too, you know, so. No, um, I get you. Like, I, I don't want to always compare, you know, things and try to have to rank them, but I just, I have to in this, in this regard. Like, I just was smiling ear to ear just watching, like, that as a backdrop to to tie pilots getting in the pod and doing shit and making it feel so much more real to me, you know. Hmm. I did like how, I and mean, we talked about it during the reaction, but 
it is hard to tell like is this all a set is there a mm -hmm. painting is there cgi like sure where are the seams on some of these locations yeah. that they're on because like it can't be all this is real but i can't no. tell where the real stops yeah I you think, know what i mean i have trouble with that on this i think the dam is real mm -hmm. i think the steps that that uh, gorn was on yeah were real but i think like the tower the the like radio house on top all of the all that shit all that is mm -hmm. added in after yeah. sure like either well, I mean, like prop or cg i'm looking at like when they're when they're going up and they have like here's the area where like their ritual things happening mm -hmm. and there's all this green the grass coming up and then you see the dam and all the other stuff and yeah. i'm like is that that can't all be a real place that they've done like i i believe they would have built a dam area at some somewhere yeah but it can't be in this shot right or is sure. it in this shot like you know? it was like, absolutely like a comp like you know a composition like it was created yes but i don't know like is the temple which part in the shot the, yeah like surely this part of the dam isn't yeah, you know it, it but, must not be right yeah and just because They're we have a dam <laughs> doesn't mean that it's in even in this area they filmed the bottom part of it but it's just so seamless. And I know that there's some criticism of stuff like the Mandalorian Book of Boba Fett primarily using the volume. And then when people hear, hey, this isn't using the volume at all, the people will just say, okay, well, the volume sucks then. So don't use it. Use this. This is better. Oh, but no. this the is The volume so, is great for certain things. For certain things. And, and location is great for other certain things. I'm also things. not convinced they're not using the volume for the uh, spaceship interior uh, when they have the window too. Sure. Whenever they went into light speed, like light came through the window and hit Luthen a couple episodes ago. Which I mean, why wouldn't what, you? That's what the volume sure. does. So I just wanted to point out, like, you know, this is the exact same, same thing that happened in the prequels. George Lucas, in his frustration with analog technology, is like, I'm pushing digital. I'm pushing everything to go digital. And a lot of people criticize that for going too much. And I think that's there's a certain element of truth to that. But if you don't push that shit, you don't get to the point where you can have nonlinear editors on your phone now. You know, you don't have, sure. you know, digital, like Lucas pushed digital so much and then we came down a little bit and mixed it in with all of our other tools, right? You can do the same thing with the volume, which I think the show is doing very well. If it were the volume technology, a lot of those shots would be kind of more eye level or sure. knee level. You wouldn't be up high. You wouldn't be up high. You wouldn't be low. You wouldn't be like, there's some shots in here like going up the stairway. Like some of those shots are stuff that you just kind of find on set. Like, hey, this would be a cool shot. Look at this because it's a physical thing, you know? I'm convinced the, the stairway was a real location. Mm -hmm. But when if you're doing it on the volume, then you have to plan for that shit. You might not find those more uh, in the moment shots. So I just. I, I love the production here, and I don't want to, like, because I'm praising the production here, make people think, oh, well, then, yeah, the Mandalorian Book of Boba Fett don't look yeah. good. There's a really good mix of things that I think that we can find for the future of Star Wars. Sure. But and, this is a bright future. I think With, with all things balanced. Yeah. I think with, like, Mandalorian, typically that's going for more of a Western feel. Sure. I feel like a lot of the shots that you want for that yeah. work with the volume, mm -hmm. typically. Unless you want, like, big establishing shots and stuff, which sure. you can just do that all CGI'd, or yeah. you, can, you can do different things with that. Well, but, it's, yeah, it's basically think, the same kind of thing. Like, Westerns use a lot of facade buildings for yeah. their, like, you know, the, the high noon draw. Sure, you know? the okay corral. Yeah, sure, something sure. like that, where those are all eye level. You know, you're not going to have a crane shot, really. Yeah too much in but, something like that. But here, if you're at a dam, then like, get the drone! You have those three guys fucking running, you know? Fucking running! <laughs> that yeah. was amazing. So, yeah, I think you're right. I think as long as they use it, don't rely on one entirely. No. Yeah. Like, use it as a tool for yeah. what sure. makes it... Then it, it this gets, is the best time to use it. It gets tired, yeah. right? But just like the prequels, I can understand the over-reliance on it in something like season one and two of The Mandalorian. It's like, hey, we're getting started. This can be cheaper, but also let's push and see how far we can go. Then you had the Book of Boba Fett where it's like, okay, we pushed pretty far, but we're also going to build this giant Tatooine square, have a fucking Rancor and giant robots in it. We can't do that with the volume. And then you have this production that chose to step away from using the volume too much and be able to push this direction. So I just love the idea of, you know, primarily Star Wars, like, pushing technologies and stuff in various ways to raise everything up rather mm -hmm. than just one. So it's just so beautiful. And not for nothing, ILM works on this television show, which they don't do much TV. So that's why that thing, that that eye just looks so amazing. I, I, I can't believe it's only halfway done. <laughs> like I said, that felt like a finale to me. Yeah. Hmm. Where do we go from here now? Well, now like, we got he's got his money. He's got the the manifesto. Mm -hmm. 
like wow. he's probably not going to get back in contact with anyone from before right like he's not going to go back to his mom but well, there's still a sister he's looking for as far as andor sure yeah they have mentioned the sister i mean he m- i don't i don't know if he's going to go back to what was it uh not moron no. that was uh he's not going to more lana what was the name of the planet though i don't know why i'm forgetting it was it more lana uh, that was the number of More, planets that are in the system. Morlana Prime or whatever. Morlana Prime or something. Yeah. Three more. Corporate. It had a different name because Ferrix, that's what it was. Ferrix. Remember, uh, she was like... Ferrix yeah, Morlani system. Yeah. Morlani system. Yeah, it's the system it's in and then there's the one and two that he traveled to that other planet but Ferrix is this, uh, the planet that his mom faked he was from, not Canari, right? It's like, I put Ferrix on every single paper I've ever written for you. And it's covering up the uh, quote-unquote continuity break because in all the source books, Cassian is said to be from Ferrix, but in this, we know he's from Canari, but they they fix that, yeah. <laughs> that problem. Hmm. I want more Mon Mothma. We keep getting, like, a scene yeah. for... 20 seconds Mm -hmm. and then it moves on and we don't see her because we had a heist that we were working with you know yeah Yeah. but like seeing her at the like the the senate yeah like talking to everybody but one sure there was a distraction because there was a robbery that happened Mm -hmm. and that went to the news and people got distracted but it felt like there was no one there even before the news started coming out like they all started clamoring as she was speaking yeah but like if you look like the lights were only on for maybe yeah. half of the, the Senate mm-hmm. seats. Yeah. yeah, and whenever they did a, like a close-up of her like looking at one of the other senators like pods, like all the other pods around them were empty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's just that the people in the Empire are starting to not even try to th- make it seem like this shit works. Like in, yeah. the, in the Clone Wars and Republic, like yeah, it didn't work, but everybody still believed it did. And now they're all kind of realizing oh, who cares? Well yeah, the Clone Wars <laughs> only work if the Republic is fighting because they believe in something, right? Yeah. You have the Separatists fighting because they believe in something. Mm-hmm. Until eventually it's just like, well, now, now it's the Empire. I mean, yeah. Padme and only... And apathy sets in. Padme only takes action episode one because she sees that the courts are going to take forever and ultimately do nothing. So fuck it. I'm going to go back to Naboo and fix it myself. And that's what gives the sympathy to the senator from Naboo who takes over. It's all great. It's all planned. It's all a goal. It's like in... Uh, in the High Republic, Aaron, like, Martian Rowe doesn't have a plan. He has yeah. a goal. And sure. And as things happen, they just go to the goal, not according to his plan. Sure. Well, like, because I don't feel that Palpatine planned on her to go back to Naboo. Yeah. You know? Like, I feel like, like, sure, he fought against it, but mm-hmm. it's like, she went back, whatever, does use this to our advantage kind of yeah. idea. But No, he only wanted sympathy because of the invasion, right? Sure. But once that happens, like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, maybe I won't have them all, yeah. But, you know, he always has these contingencies and stuff, so. Great interest. All right, well, uh, I really want to check out some Q&A from this episode. Uh, Brayden asks, do you think that the blue crystal, the uh, sky crystal, the one, do you think that one specifically has force properties and that it will be like Anakin's lightsaber or it will be more of like the Losat's bow rifle adapted to be used moderately but still be used in ancient rituals or customs like the Night Sisters? Hmm. Uh, I think it'll have some type of significance but not necessarily anything to do with the force. Yeah. Other than it being Kyber. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I felt like it was like a contingency of his, like it, it was worth his something, pay, right? right? So it's like you take this. It was like and a down eventually payment. Eventually, you'll get paid. So he gave it back to Val mm-hmm. to get to Luthen, but I don't know if it had come to much else, really. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of figured it, it like, because he kept saying, like, hey, don't sell this, but if you do, take at least 50,000 credits, despite saying it was worth 30 or whatever. I just wonder if he, like, said that just so that he'd have a hard time getting rid of it, and it has, like, a tracker or something in it. Mm-hmm. I think you get to him before. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I, I don't know. Maybe. I think he knows what its true value is, yeah. whereas... You know, like uh, Skarn. Mm-hmm. Skeen. Skeen, yeah. Skeen would be like, well, this is how much it could get for it quickly, yeah. right? But mm-hmm. to hold you. out for the good deal, you know, a fence will give you what they want to give you, like right away, but that's not necessarily a good deal. Sure. And the idea of like it's only worth what it is if someone's willing to pay it. You yeah, know? exactly. It's like, well, I could definitely get 30000 for this. Mm-hmm. I could make it fifty, but like from a collector, you know? Sure. 
Uh, Grant Smith says, That is, without a doubt, the most stressful something Star Wars has made me. Can you guys think of another Star Wars moment that has stressed you out as much or at least close to this episode? Uh, Solo did. Solo is pretty stressful. I remember watching it at one point and <coughs> being like... This is so dangerous. It was the train, right? It was the train heist. And like the more I thought about it, I'm like, Chewie could die here. Han could die here. You know, uh, I can't think of what Maeve's name is. You mean in the moment they could die, yes. Yeah, like all that that train heist was terrible. And then guys with magnet boots showed up, started shooting at him and stuff too. Range troopers. Jumping all over the damn place and stuff. And there's robots jumping. And then there's... Infa's nest, and Infa's all nest in the cloud like, rise. That's I'm, the, how more people didn't die. I don't know. Yeah, but they, I mean, they lost two out of five there. You know. Sure. Uh, honestly, for me, in terms, I mean, this the thing about tension and stress is that it's incredibly. It makes you very weary. You don't want to be in it too long. This sure. was long, a long stressful thing, which I think was done masterfully. <laughs> for me, I mean, I was very stressed when I thought Chewie exploded in that in that lander, you know. Sure. But he didn't. Thank God. And then I was stressed learning that he was in Interrogation 12. I'm like, fuck! They're torturing him, my sweet boy! <laughs> and they did. There was like a cutscene of Kylo torturing Chewie, which they thought was too dark. And I'm like, yeah, that would be dark. Hmm. Remember in Boba Fett, the, uh, the standoff. Yeah, sure. That was pretty stressful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was very, very, very stressed out and worried for Cobb Vanth when he was staring down fucking Cad Bane. Yeah. <laughs> but I was also excited, too. Uh, Adam says that Cinta is easily the truest believer in that cause, needing to stay behind like that. I hope that we get to see or hear her getting out safely. Also, you never really hear about the Rebellion taking child hostages. Shows how dark the show really is. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember hearing about in The Dark Knight, which is already, what, PG-13, right? Uh, They were having to, you know, whenever Two-Face has Jim Gordon's kids, he has a gun, but he never actually points it at the sun, because that would make it rated R. Yeah. So, it's interesting that they had that blaster right at that kid's head, too. Mm Mm-hmm. But... It shoots and lasers. It's on, it's on Disney Plus. Lasers yeah, it shoots lasers. Lasers, lasers are okay. not bullets. Yeah, bullets yeah, are right. different. Yeah, things shoot lasers, you get more leeway. That's the genius of George Lucas in the prequel era. He's able to have stuff like the Clone Wars, and no one gives a shit because the robot robots are funny, and no one no one cares when they die. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know <laughs> why? <laughs> and you can't see the clones' faces. Yeah, yeah right. It's well, the same with stormtroopers, right? Mm-hmm. I would just kill all the stormtroopers. It's like, but, but, it's like, I ah, know one cares because you, you can't. They're even, bad anyway. They're yeah, bad and you can't relate to their faces or anything. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't see them. Like, oh. mm-hmm. <laughs> and they don't I, go, oh, when I they die. They just, pew, I can't over. remember what game it was, but they were being rated uh, for a mature rating or whatever. And the way they got around it is they officially described the stormtroopers as robot like sentries. They just lie. <laughs> well, robot-like it. can mean many things. Yeah, I know. But like, they can be, like, can be robot-like. Yeah, yeah they can well, act like a robot yeah. and be robot-like. When the original trilogy was coming out, like, I remember, I don't remember, I, I've heard about the response of a lot of kids and, like, asking, like, are the stormtroopers robots? Because they never see their face. Yeah, so, never see any It's blood. not, like, yeah. completely out of left field that that would happen, but I just love that. Oh, no, the, the creators knew. They were just trying to get around some shit. Uh, Tyler Shepard says, towards the end of the episode, Mon Mothma was talking about the Gormans. Do you think mm-hmm. we'll see on screen the Gorman massacre play out? Uh, it's the second time she's mentioned them. This one in the Imperial setting, and like, no one cares, and literally no one is caring, so... No one cares. Uh, I think that we focus on Mon a little bit more in the next arc, especially now that Luthen is going to be like, hey, I actually have some real... Not power, but I have some money to throw around now. Yeah. So I think that they're going to... Uh, I think you're going to do some interesting things. I'm excited to see if we're going to get Saul Guerrero in here. Uh, yeah. I, maybe the Gorman stuff might be a, a launching pad for that. Because we do have a lot of address to address with her family and with... She wants to bring in somebody, she said, right, to the circle. She did at one point, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. We've not dealt with that anymore. Yeah, I think maybe the, maybe the next one might be like the more Mon Mothma-centric arc or something. I don't know. That will be cool. Maybe she hires Hander. Maybe. Oh, I didn't notice this, but you're right. Star Wars War of Three Shadows says, Did anyone else catch Nemec's last words 
were to Andor. Climb, climb, climb. These are the last words of K2SO in Rogue One. Mm. I noticed that. Yeah, he's climbing up the data tower. Yeah. Climb, climb, climb. And then, then he has his little action scene and dies. Didn't he say dive after I, climbing? I don't know. Did he? Didn't he say to level out? And then, like, yeah. They had to go real fast. They would have had to climb eventually back <laughs> to get to space. I, I, I'm just trying to remember. Maybe his last words were climb, but Maybe. I don't. I remember him doing the climb. Climb! Aaron, don't let the details get in the way of a good anecdote. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, might, I might be mixing him up, man. I'm really wrong, but I was like, did he say more? Uh, Yuzing said, the visual effects of the eye were amazing, but I also love to see the reactions of the natives below. Do you think it's significant that the Empire doesn't care much for natural phenomena like the eye? It makes me think about the bare mountaintop of Coruscant in Light of the Jedi. Yeah, Monument Plaza is the, uh, it's the only place on Coruscant. It used to be the highest mountain, and now it's just, there's a spot where you can actually touch the Land. original planet, which is cool. Um, but I mean, even the Imperial troopers down there were looking. They weren't crying like the Adani were. No, but, yeah. They weren't having a religious experience. Yeah. But, but there were, there it was, was a, a light lot show. Of, like, what was it, last episode where people were like, but sir, uh, you know, this planet sucks. Yeah. yeah. We want to see this. Yeah. You know, it's like they were interested in it. They were. At least on a lower level. Even the Commandant, I guess, was like, we will be in the tower with yeah. food and this and that, watching the light show. You know? Yeah, and yeah. even the guys that were in the vault room. They're playing cards because they figure, well, nobody's going to come here now. Yeah, we got to be inside, but no one's coming. Let's sure. play some cards. Like a skeleton crew. Yeah. I uh, I really love the mom those moments of seeing the Donnie, like, you know, like literally weeping looking at this thing. That's how important it is to him. And I love the choices of going back to it during the heist. It reminds me of, uh, you know, Peter Jackson when it comes to the Battle of Helm's Deep. He had a real hard time with the edit. And one of his other writers just kind of said, like, let's just shoot a bunch of, like, scared kids and women in the in the caves. And this occasionally, when things get tense, go back to them. And they did it, and it made the whole scene. It's like, oh, no, actually, now you actually care about what they're fighting for. Yeah. And even though the rebels here aren't necessarily fighting for the Donnie people, that's the cause that will create an alliance. Ooh. Sean, uh... Evely, Evely says, do you think that Nemec wrote, quote, rebellions are built on hope in his manifesto? Hmm. Because, yeah, Cassian is the one that will eventually say rebellions are built on hope, and then Jin will say it to the Rebel Alliance meeting right before the Battle of Scarif. That could be a cool connection. I really hope so. Because I don't see Cassian saying that now. Not right now, no. Yeah, I don't think he has much hope in him right mm -hmm. now. It's like... The rebellion is shitty. Empire is shittier. I don't want to be a part of either of them. I just want to see when he gets to the point of like, right now I don't feel like he's there to fight against the Empire, though he doesn't like the Empire. I sure. want to see what makes him join, you know? Like, he shot Skeen, obviously, because he's against the Empire, not for just taking it and we become yeah. wealthy. But is he like, does he want to be attached to something like Luthen? Because I don't think, at this point, I don't think he does, because he's like, here, mm -hmm. give this to your boss, we're done. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, Kyle Braun says, we didn't bury our gays. No, they didn't. They came out and just completely showed the, the hand-holding there. Mm -hmm. uh, when Luthen let out a sigh of relief at the end of the episode, I realized that I'd been holding my breath the same way the entire episode. Do you hope that we see what happened to Senta and Vel, or would you rather leave that open-ended? Hmm. Hmm. I don't... I mean, I imagine Luthen meets up with Vel. Yeah. But I don't know if we see Vel and, and Senta again. I mean, Senta... I want to know that they... I wonder if she got off plane. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like to think that, I mean, we know they have a two-season plan for the show, and we're having so many characters already in six episodes. It felt like we've met 100 characters. I like to think that all of these little, little tiny stories will eventually add up to something greater than their sum. And maybe you end this show with Cassian fully part of the Rebellion, with the people that have survived around him, holding up their small part of the weight, right? I think you could do something like that. So you could have Senta and Vel kind of come back and be uh, very much like what Rebels did, right? Like you had the Iron Squadron kid, and you had, uh, you know, various people that we met throughout throughout the show Rebels, and they kind of come back to help the Siege of Lothal. Sure. Mm -hmm. Which, like, if the, what's it called, the, the Gorms? The Gorms? Uh, the, the Gorons? Uh, Gorman. The Gormans? 
Yeah. Like that situation there, mm-hmm. if that's what really pushes her over the edge to join the rebellion or to really push into that more yeah. so, like leave the Senate, um, that's, you know, what, later into Rebels? Yeah. Like this starts around the same time as Rebels starts, mm-hmm. right? So possibly what they were talking about last time with like rebellion things or maybe some things that, the, that we saw in Rebels, maybe yeah. some things that Luthen's doing, you know, stuff mm-hmm. that we haven't seen. Um, so like... We might get that in season two, maybe, or if we do some time jumping around. I don't know how far season two takes us. If it's going to be like that's all they plan to do for Andor before leading up to Rogue One, because the events of Rogue One and the end of Rebels and stuff should be getting kind of close to each other. You yep. know, like, yeah. With having those, do we end up getting like the Mon Mothma thing, which is like in season four mm-hmm. of their, I don't know, four to five years of sure stuff. We might not be getting Mon Mothma right away with that issue yeah that might be what pushed her over the edge yeah and on the old legends it was really the thing that she it was like the first time someone like straight up said the emperor is responsible for this which was a huge no-no and that kind of like put her really in the sights of the empire so maybe it'll be something similar yeah so like we might build up and have a lot of just a lot of build up in general towards Mm -hmm. that event but then that may be towards the end of the Andor series as a whole I personally would really like it if uh, maybe that's something that Starts or ends season one, and then season two can be full rebellion. Maybe like this could be like how Cassian gets there, and season two can maybe be how Cassian grows as a rebel, and then right sure. into Rogue One. I think, like how long does he have K two in Rogue One? Like before it, yeah. Like up until the events of it, does he mm-hmm. get does he get K two just before the events of Rogue it One? It feels like they have does quite they a have bit of K two yeah. for yeah. like three years. I would say. That's probably another shift, too. I think that you bring K2 and Alan Tudyk into the second season. Sure, I would yeah, very much a, enjoy that's that. That's what I would assume. <laughs> that's going to be so great. Even if there's like a... And like, maybe the Here's five years BBY, and then there's like two years BBY or something, yeah. and he's been with him for a few months. Maybe. You know? Sure. And they're still like ironing out the The end of the season here, that's what we do is we get K2. Maybe, yeah. Oh, shit, we got K2 now, you know? Like, that could be cool. Uh, Stormer says, uh, for this episode to be full of characters that we don't know, apart from Clem, and to be one of the best episodes I've ever seen is Crazy Thoughts. Yes. Uh, no, I mean, whenever Nemec got crushed, Mm -hmm. I think we all had, like, the same reaction, like, at the same time, like, what? No! No! Yeah. And then we look at his face, and we were all like, fuck! (laughs) Like, at the same time, like... I mean, it's one of the reasons I love Rogue One, and I think that, like, when Rogue One came out, there was a lot of, uh... There was a lot of criticism about me. Like, well, I don't care about any of these characters. They're all brand new. And they're was, all just going to die. Which you know? was fucking crazy to me. I know they're going to die. Yeah, of course. So, which, I don't know. Like, I felt like I got to know Baze and Churrut and those characters more than I did yeah. fucking Han Solo in, in, in A New Hope. They had so much more you know, screen time and characterization. But they only had that one. Uh, here, yeah. I mean, we don't know who all is going to die. Unfortunately, most of them do. But... No, it's just, it's fantastic characterization. You needed episodes like that middle chapter in this arc to really feel oh, yeah. what it was going to be like when we, we lose these characters. Sure. And I don't think, like, having, necessarily like having an idea of what the outcome is doesn't mean, like, well, now I don't have to be invested or I, I can't be invested. Like, yeah. I still enjoy the prequels, and I know, like, well, Anakin's got to turn. Sure. You know, like, I know that has to come. Yeah. I know, like, the Jedi have to end. I don't like seeing it, but... I'm getting invested in these characters and then seeing the downfall or yeah. seeing like, no, you could have done this. Why didn't you do this? And yeah. I don't know. And it's stuff like this. It's like these little victories and these dark characters that make stuff, at least, at least for me, it's more important that like the ending of The Last Jedi when all of those kids who are being beat by their slave master, well, when the slave master's asleep, we tell stories of Luke Skywalker. That's what Luke Skywalker does these people don't have a Luke Skywalker. They don't have Jedi. They are just them trying Versus, to wreck enough shit to, yeah. to try to do something. You know? Like, Cassian can't say rebellions are built on hope until he understands something more about that, whether that's through a manifesto or something He needs to else. understand rebellions and hope. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I also... It, it sucks, but it's also kind of interesting that characters like uh, 
like Tamarin or uh, Gorn, really. Like he, Gorn. I feel like he was probably the most developed. I like Gorn a lot. And we had one blink and you miss it shot of him getting shot. He's dead. He's gone. Yeah. You know, it's sad, but it's also kind of interesting in terms of a of a TV yeah. show. So Tamarin had more of a like you're watching him run, trying to get over to where he's going. And yeah. Gets shot on the way. Yeah. And, and then it, it shows his body, too, when they're leaving, but they don't show Gorn's body when you're leaving. Do you, you know? think Skeen purposely didn't cover as much so he could try to hide yeah, less people? I was yeah. thinking about that, that after sucks. after the well, turn at the end. I don't know if he wasn't per- if it was because of like the money or whatnot, yeah. but if he's out for himself and not really here for the rebellion, I could see him just yeah. not putting his life at, at as much risk in order yeah. to save him, you know? And that makes so much sense why he wanted to stop at the, at the doctor. Right? Yeah, he doesn't want to take you all the way to Luthen or whoever. Yeah, let's not turn it in. We gotta no. stop. He needs a stop where there's no one there. Yeah, he was he was Fuck playing at the heartstrings. Yeah, yeah, and if he couldn't get him to turn, I don't know what he would. Have. He might have held him hostage. You know, forced him to fly the ship out. Sure. You know, because he said like, I can't fly that ship. I need you. So like, you're not gonna kill Andor, but if you have a pistol, maybe you'll hold him up and. Yeah, sure. Like, shoot him in the legs. Sure, yeah. Something like that, just long enough to get to the moon or whatever. Yes, he needs us to fly. They might have rudder things in there. I don't know what they have. You know? I don't know. I mean, if you're just, just flying through space, you don't need legs. What? What well, about their legs? They don't need those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brian H. asked, do you think that we will tie in Ezra's broadcast mes- message from Rebel Season 1? as inspiration for Andor to fully join the Rebellion. I don't mind stuff like that. I think it really makes for good world building, but I also I do kind of like just being able to be thrust into new situations with new characters and play stuff that way. So, it also doesn't have to be Ezra's. It could be Ezra's parents, right? Uh, well, they were broadcasting It really before. depends on the timeline because they were broadcasting before and then Ezra does that broadcast. That, that would have been... Earlier, should though, already right? be captured yeah. at this point. I would say yeah. so. They're probably uh, in the right. prison by now. I, I like the idea of doing the broadcast because then it helps you to be like, ah, here's where you are in the timeline. Yeah. And you have a better understanding of that. Although, what could be interesting is I don't know the events exactly of what happened with the jailbreak that got out um, Ryder. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. right, because he escaped mm-hmm. and the parents were involved, but then they like died in that. Yeah. Situation, right? Sure. sure. What if instead of hearing the broadcast of Ezra, what if we actually met Ezra's parents and see their death? Sure. But like it's not necessarily super like apparent. Yeah. And it's also not like, well, here's something that we have seen already mm-hmm. or heard already, but it's more of a these people were actually involved in this, but we didn't know what occurred. Yeah. But I don't know. It'd be interesting Ryder to see if they governor. if they do something like that, uh, how will they do it in a way where people that haven't seen Rebels don't feel like they're being left behind in the story? You know? I mean, could you do it and it's not a forefront kind of thing? Maybe. They're there for someone entirely different, but you also see it's them possible. involved in it, you know? Yeah. It's like, who are those? Those are the Bridgers. Sure. You know? It's like, okay, come on, Bridgers. And, like, you don't even really name them, name them. It's just like, sure. that is them. Mm-hmm. Treat them like one of the, you know, episode one where it's like, ah, oh, well, there's a Jedi back here in the background, you yeah. know? It's like, well, he wasn't originally, but <laughs> there's more stories of that guy somewhere you else know, now, you know? You know? Yeah. Like, why not just have that? Why not put those in there where it's like, well, we don't need to have them in the forefront, but they're back there. Sure. That might be kind of neat. All right. Well, that's the last Q&A. Thanks, everybody, for submitting those. And we are going to have a poll over at Patreon uh, for our supporters, and we're going to be talking about that next episode. The poll is, uh, are we going to see the Gorman invasion in Andor? Mon Mothma has mentioned it a couple of times. We know uh, if you guys watch some of our discussions that uh you know it is a thing from legends is this something that's going to be adapted we're actually going to see it or is it going to continue to be kind of in the background just to kind of color mon mothma's distaste with the empire sure Mm. i mean it certainly seems like we're heading in that direction Mm -hmm. um i would say maybe we hear about it rather than actually being there gotcha um so background You'd say? I would say background. Yeah. I think seeing that would be cool because it gives you a link maybe to what pushes her to where we see her in Rebels. Yeah. So I think having that, though I don't know that we'd have it this season Mm -hmm. unless we do some time jumping things. Because I feel like Mon Mothman's episode in that was like season three or four. Sure. um, Which is towards the end of like that Mm -hmm. five year gap I feel like that we have before Rogue One and New Hope and stuff happens. So 
Um, I feel like if we're going to get a major time jump, it's going to happen next episode, honestly. Yeah. Like, I think. Because, well, if this being like halfway through the season, it might be a good time to do it. Especially if they, we got five years to cover, we got two seasons, 12 episodes each. I mean, maybe. You know? I, mean it would, I guess it would kind of make sense now that he has the uh, manifesto. Like, he's been studying it in the past years, yeah, months, and, whatever. And I say major, and, but it could be six months. It could be. Sure. Not, I wouldn't say over a year. But I don't know. Maybe. Like, if you were going to be like, hey, we got four X, let's say, of our whole show, you might do six, 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 and six episodes. Oh, okay. You're of the two seasons? Yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah, uh-huh. I don't know. But to answer the question, what, would you, what were you going to say? That we do see it or don't see it? Yes. We do see it. Yeah. I don't think it'll be like, I don't think we'll see Tarkin land in his yes. you know, no. star short and a bunch we of people. We will see that. But I think that we will feature and see the Gorman massacre or whatever more. Yes. And we'll see a bunch of people like, ah, and we'll see up above the ship and we'll see the ship just go, and you see, and then like a bunch of noises stops. Like uh, a thousand voices crying out at once and then silence. Suddenly silence. silence. Guys, thank you very much for watching this episode. Please subscribe. We love Star Wars. We love talking about Star Wars. And we're going to be talking about more Star Wars on next week's Badonka Gonk, found right here on the YouTube channel. But also, anywhere you can find a podcast feed. Yeah. Or live at twitch.tv slash That too.